Hi, welcome everybody. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Good, awesome. So today uh, our session is to talk about uh, Scale.io plugins uh, for Mirantis Fuel. I'm Patrick Butler Monterde, I'm director for the MC Code team, and with me I have Adrian Moreno, who is uh, one of my lead developers. And today uh, what we want to talk about is why do we build for Scale.io for Scale.io integration using Fuel Mirantis for OpenStack. So, just uh, how many of you guys know uh, Scale.io? Okay, about 25% of them, so perfect. So Scale.io is one of the solutions that we had at EMC that allows you to have software-defined block storage. And the idea is here how we can put this software-defined storage as part of an OpenStack deployment. So using the technology that we have as part of EMC, uh, we utilize the plugin infrastructure that the, that the people from Mirantis have built in order to integrate those two. So Mirantis Fuel, how many of you know Mirantis Fuel? Yeah, about 20% about or so. So Mirantis Fuel is basically a deploying mechanism for OpenStack clusters that would allow you to deploy effectively you know, OpenStack. And the plugin systems allow you to add extra features to that deployment as part of a full-on integration system. Okay? So from a scale IO perspective, we have two main things. We have, if you have an existing scale IO deployment, and for that we have the Fuel plugin Scale IO sender, and then we build another plugin in the case that you want to deploy a high available cluster. And as part of that high available cluster, you want to deploy Scale IO inside of that. Okay? So basically, what you'll see when you go into, into the repositories, the plugin repositories, uh, uh, as part of OpenStack, you will see those two plugins, just as so you know what we're talking about here. So from an architecture perspective, this is what you're going to see. You deploy your, your fuel, fuel master. You will install inside Fuel Master the Cinder plugin. And from there, you will basically do your standard deployment as part of that. The scale of your cluster lives outside. And basically, what the plugin would allow you to do is automatically connect those controller nodes and compute nodes to the Cinder via Cinder to the scale of your cluster so you can take advantage of that. Okay? So this is a standard deployment. And as you scale up, uh, sorry, as you scale out, what you'll see is like as you add more controllers or you add more compute, what's going to happen is basically the plugin will automatically deploy the client side on each one of those nodes. Okay? So from an implementation perspective, you don't really have to do anything. Once the plugin is installed on the master, on the fuel master, everything is taking care of that. So this is for the Cinder one, the external, using the external. The internal one, it's a little bit more complex. Because here what we have is we use Mirantis best practices on how to deploy a high availability cluster, which the requirements are having a minimum of three controller nodes and uh, compute node and a scale IO Cinder node. Okay? As part of that, when you create the deployment, what's going to happen is the plugin will deploy n number of nodes. So the minimum nodes that you're going to need for a high, availab high availability cluster is going to be the seven that you see in there. So the three controller nodes, you will have three scale IO Cinder host nodes, and then you will also have one compute node. Okay? One of the things that we've done in order to provide the highest bandwidth as possible is you'll notice there is a layer called the HA proxy load balancer. What this allows us to do is actually to enable the REST API to be available through the three controllers. And the REST API is used by Scale.io to communicate transactions and you know how the data is need to move on that software-defined storage blocks. Okay. So now with that, Adrian is going to move forward and is going to show you a full-on video on how to get the Cinder plugin installed and also you know, the configuration that is required from uh, that standpoint. Yeah. yeah, so let me you see the video. OK, all right. So, so we have put together a, a, a video. So right now we, we are in the, in the Fuel Master node. And what, what we are going to do is we're going to check that we don't have any plugins installed. And we are going to go ahead and, and clone the repository where we have the, the Scalio Cinder plugin. 
and uh, in order to, to build a plugin to generate the, the RPM and install it into, into the fuel master node. So we are cloning the, the repo. So once we have, a, I mean, in, in a few weeks, we'll have the, the, the plugin ready in the Mirantis catalog. But for the moment, we have to, to build the plugin. So we check that the plugin is, uh, is correct. And we issue the FT, FPB uh, build uh, command to build the plugin and generate the, the RPM file. So, so we are going to CD into the directory and check that uh, the plugin RPM is there. So that's going to install the, we are going to install the, the plugin into the fuel master. And afterwards, we're going to check that uh, the plugin is, uh, is installed correctly with the field plugins uh, command. So now that the plugin is, is there, we can go to the, to, the, to the web UI, create a new environment. Uh, let's give it, give it a name. And, and we have to select uh, CentOS uh, as a base image, because right now, uh, Scala.io is only, only working on, on uh, CentOS. Uh, Ubuntu support is on, is on the way. And uh, right now, and afterwards, we are going to go ahead and, and create the nodes and assign them uh, roles. To, sa to save some time, we already uh, skipped that process. We have in this, in this example, we have three controllers, one compute and one, and one cinder, cinder, cinder node. So afterwards, we are going to go to the settings tab and uh, uh, delete the, the external repos, because uh, the slips now don't have uh, internet access in, in this scenario. And uh, we are going to scroll down, enable the, the plugin, and fill in all the required uh, information here to, to connect the, the OpenStack cluster, a cluster to, to the Scala.io one. So we fill in everything. Uh, and we scroll, scroll down and also check that we have a, a valid and an accessible DNS and MTP server uh, from, from, the, from the OpenStack uh, cluster that we can access from, from the slave nodes. We save the, the settings. And we can also check the, the network and modify whatever we want to, to make it work. So when, when everything is ready, we just deploy the changes. And that's going to deploy the OpenStack cluster and connect it to, to the Scala.io. So it takes some time. So in the, in the meantime, we are going to see the open the, the Scala.io control panel. So it's going to be here. And we see that we don't have any volume defined so far. And we have a Scala.io cluster of uh, three nodes, three SDS uh, nodes, with a total of uh, 300 uh, gigabytes. Uh, we are. These are, uh, yeah, uh, one, 100 gigabytes each, each node, the 300 total. So after a few hours, uh, depending on the hardware configuration or the number of nodes, it's going to uh, end the deployment. And we are, we are going to go ahead and log in into the Horizon UI. And see here the, the block storage devices. We can see that they are using uh, Scala.io. So what we are going to do now is create a volume type uh, to use the, the Scala.io uh, block storage. And afterwards, we are going to, these are, these are the settings, the, the extract spe specs for, to work with, uh, with the Scala.io. Everything is documented in, in the GitHub repo. So we are going to go ahead and create a, a volume and give it a name uh, and use the, the volume type that we have just created and uh, create a volume of uh, 8 gigabytes. And I'm going to see how that is, uh, is reflected on, on the Scala.io side. So the volume is creating. And we open the Scala.io control panel and see how the defined volumes changes to one, right? Zero mapped, zero attached. So we are going to now uh, go ahead and, and attach that volume to, uh, to a running VM. We already have a running VM to, to save some time. So we're just going to go and, uh, and attach the volume to, to the VM and see how that uh, changes also on the, on the Scala.io side. Is that zero mapped changes to one, right? We are now using the, the only volume that we have. And that's also uh, reflected on the, on the UI, on the Horizon UI. So. So basically, uh, that's, a, that's a quick video that we have uh, put together to show the, the process of installing and using the, the, the plugin. Uh, thank you so much for, for attending. And uh, starting from now, you have the, the code, the source code ready and available on these repositories. The first one is the one I, I just uh, showed you. And the second one, we are, it's still in progress. And we are, uh, we are, uh, are going to have it ready in, in a couple of weeks. So thank you again. Yeah, thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of the summit. Thanks.